Welcome back. All right. Welcome back to the Vintage Super League. I'm here joined by uh, Rich Shea, who did a fantastic round of commentary. I really enjoyed the commentary that you you and Dave put out last round. I thought it, I thought it was awesome. Well, so. I appreciate it. I mean, you always do amazing commentary, so you know this round should be fun. Well, <laughs> I, I was dying it at like it's not often that I've wished, or it's been a long time since I've wished for a Zernor, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we just saw Kai actually lose to Bob's. Crucifor or Crucible uh, Zern yes. or uh, Fast Bond deck, which had uh, looked like it was off to a pretty bad start in Game 3 there. It uh, it was, but Library is an extremely powerful card. You could say it's great. And uh, because Kai wasn't able to present a threat quickly, eventually Bob was just able to go to the library and read enough books so that Kai didn't have a chance to get back into the game. That's that slice and dice there was huge. The second one as well. Um, yeah, I mean, library, as you guys said many times, if once it gets going, it's really hard to stop. And Kai had the the opposite kind of hand you would want against the library. He actually had a hand though. I think was pretty good against a multi five with just a bunch of good cards in it, but with no threats. Yeah, he just lost straight up to library. I mean, that's it, basically it was happened. one of the one of the different decks make assumptions about what role they'll play in a matchup when they're being built. Um, Storm, for example, sort of assumes it's the aggro deck, so if it meets a faster deck like Belger, it's in trouble. And one of the one of the assumptions that Delver makes as a deck is that it's going to be ahead card advantage wise. And then it has decisions about how to leverage that card advantage. Normally it has card advantage over an opponent, not only because of Gush, but because of its low land count, meaning that its average draws are better. But library is an uncounterable way that the opponent can just get way ahead of you on cards. And there's at most one strip mine in a traditional Delver deck to stop it. I'm not playing anything that stops Library in my deck. So yeah. it's it just attacks the deck in a way that the deck is not built to handle. Yeah, and we, we pretty much saw that. And uh, speaking of Delver, actually, we're about to see the same matchup that you played <laughs> earlier earlier tonight, which is uh, Ephro on Delver against Randy on Belcher. Oh. Having been on the receiving end of this matchup twice, <laughs> it's uh, it's not an easy spot for the Delver player. No, and neither of you guys have Nolrod. Uh, that's a, no, a, a sure card that, that some of the Delver decks play. I, w I was lamenting that uh, for the last two weeks, actually. That uh, had I been expecting, I thought there was a, a non-zero chance that Randy might be on Belcher, having seen him play it in the, the holiday event. But I would never expect this from Chris. Um, I thought maybe workshops, maybe a, a bluish aggro deck, maybe something with meddling mage. I was not expecting to get belched. Yeah, but uh, they both showed up with it, and I guess are now four out combined because <laughs> Randy got to play a bonus match. Uh, it's it's a it's a brilliant deck. It's an extraordinarily powerful deck, and uh, you know. Um, Props to Danny for making it, and I know that Randy and Chris both did some really, really powerful things with tuning it. So I have to give them credit. They they they've done really well with a good deck and a very strong build of it. So you know nothing but respect for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I lost to it week one as well. So it's it's a pretty rough deck to face, though. The Delver deck, I think, is reasonably well equipped, even though it doesn't even without Norad. The Delver deck is at least a deck full of very cheap threats and a, a lot of permission and card draw. So of the blue decks, it's it's a reasonable deck to bring against that deck. It it is. Um, I've found in testing that it's it's hard to get ahead in the matchup as the Delver player. Um, the deck just depletes your resources so quickly that you you often want to spend some time. Uh, resources to get ahead. I think you mentioned that last week, had I pitched the mental misstep instead of a draw spell, um, I would have been in much better shape. That that sort of decision making is difficult because being not having the counter when you're asked a tough question by the Belcher player just means that you lose the game. Yeah, def definitely. All right. Alrighty, let's take a look at the players. This is the, the matchup we've got here. Uh, Randy against Efro. Uh, <laughs> Randy at 2-0 yeah. again because he played a bonus match last week. 
<laughs> right, right. Rand Randy on the pride side this time. Efro on the power side. Though Belcher, of course, having much more actual power cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, you see Randy as uh, one of the actual numerous Hall of Famers in this in the Vintage Super League. It's, we've got a, a Hall of Fame dense field here. <laughs> uh, and uh, you see that uh, he's also got a, a Pro Tour win, something that uh, his opponent has yet to acquire. He it looked like he he you know he may ha have had a pretty good shot last last weekend, but uh, unfortunately, it's an exciting weekend for him. Yeah, and you see yeah. median Pro Tour finish 18th from Randy. That's not a statistic that most people can say. That they've finished that well, that consistently amongst the pro tours they've played in. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, here's the here's the deck he's been running. It's like you said, the the same deck Chris is playing. I think about seventy three of the same cards. I think they maybe one or yeah. two off. It doesn't have balance, which I thought was a really neat addition. Yeah, um, but uh, we, we've seen this deck in action plenty so far. <laughs> yeah, you know, you you try to tell people no vintage really isn't about turn one kill. No, there's been a long time, and then this happens. Yeah, um, this is one of the more vintagey decks. <laughs> impressive fashion, but it's also capable of. So I know, uh, taking a look here at Eric Froelich's stats, uh, he he had to have some last minute updates. It's because he he added a GP top eight and a Pro Tour top eight and a GP win to his resume over the last uh, week and a half. Or so, so he, he's he's more on fire than any other player in the world right now. We'll see if that carries over to the Vintage Super League or, or if uh, <laughs> he left it all in DC there, which it's a pretty brutal match. I, I I was able to watch his his match in the top eight against Jesse Hampton, and uh, hey, you know four Pro Tour top eights, even if even if he he wasn't able to win one, was still obviously incredible. So I think we'll be looking at Efro potentially adding his name to the Hall of Fame ranks this year. We'll we'll, we'll get to that discussion in a couple months, I suspect. And here another Delver deck that we that we've actually seen Delver in every match so far. They've all had somewhat slight differences, but it's all the same basic deck of a uh, Delver, Pyromancer, cheap counters, and cheap card draw. Already, uh, Rich will be back momentarily, but uh, I'll be able to handle this for, for the for the time being. Potentially not, not quite as deterministic as Rich, but uh, <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh, so most importantly, let's see who's on the play here, since that in this sort of matchup, uh, that, you know, Randy's a turn one deck in, in every sense of the word. So if, if Ifro is on the play, it becomes very, very different. And given that Ifro kept... I think I've come back here. Oh, there we are. <laughs> All right, we're back, and uh, we see that Efro has library, and uh, library is less good against decks that are good at winning the game on the first turn. Yeah, both because it's not an attrition battle as much, and because you can't really afford to play library turn one. Like, even let's say Efro's on the play, which we're going to find out shortly. Can he afford to play turn one library and leave no counter up? I think he has to play the Scalding Turn. I think i yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I'm brave enough to say library go against the mono blue Belcher deck. Yeah, I, I would be uh, I would be surprised if Ifro did end up playing turn one library. And honestly, on seven cards, I think there's a good chance Ifro's on the play because I think those seven cards are not not keepable on the draw against the Belcher deck. And in fact, Ifro does leave a Scalding yeah. Tarn. Right, I like Scalding Tarn here. Um, I mean, there's nothing saying that you can't try to build to the library. I yeah. I actually don't think I would play Pyromancer next turn. I think both to leave the the spell appears open and to try to get onto the library, I would leave library up and just pass the turn with two mana. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. And here you see where having a Cataxian probe would be useful. If I guess if you could see Randy's hand, he would play a spell pierce there. Then it would get misstepped, so it's about the same. Randy, of course, doesn't have a third mana yet. He's he's on two mana with Opal and Chrome Mox providing all the mana he's got. But he's got a Time Twister and two Forcibles and a misstep. So I think this seems like a very keepable hand. Right. It does. There are so many outs here. And if he gets any mana source, he can Time Twister with Counter Backup. Yeah, and the key, unfortunately, not... Not really the mana source he's looking for. 
as with pretty much any game with this deck, if, if it ever just draws the Tolarian Academy naturally, it just, you know, it's a huge favorite yeah. to win the game. Yeah, yeah. both of my uh, matches on here against this deck have involved a, a natural Tolarian Academy, which is just this nightmare scenario. And all, I, I've been testing and keeping the library from arriving, uh, sorry, keeping the Academy from arriving is just the most important thing you're trying to do. And when it just happens naturally, you're just in a, a wretched spot. You know, wretched spots, looks like Efro is now able to go to the library. So now, despite delaying it a turn, Efro now can start taking in two cards a turn, which puts more pressure on Randy to draw a mana source quickly. Yeah, and Randy so far has failed to do so. And you know, even though Ifro did have to take a little bit of time initially to get the library going, uh, things are looking all right for him now, especially since he's picked up his own Pyroblast and a Mental Misstep. So right. he actually might be able to win a counter war here. Though he might actually have to discard a young Pyromancer. I think that's the play here. He, he, yeah, he I can don't cast like Pyromancer Gush, Pyromancer discard a bunch of cards. I think putting yeah. shields down is... Yeah, I mean, the third, the third Pyromancer won't do much for you, nor is it a blue card. So I think you would discard that. Yeah. But that's actually okay because library itself is a threat. Library is a thing that will eventually win you the game. Yeah, and I, I, I like the idea of just pass with spell. Because the thing is, you have two counters in your hand that cost mana. So if you cast anything, you're not able to keep spell pierce and pyroblast up. So Right. So, oh, Randy drew Ancestral. Is he just going to go for it here? I think he I has to. Here. And they're definitely going to fight over it. They are, and one of the things that's worth noting is if Randy doesn't win this fight but does sufficiently deplete Ephro's hand, then he could buy some time from the library. And of course, yeah. Randy doesn't know that Ephro's hand is full of counters, so you know Randy could just be winning the game on the spot here. Well, I think I think Randy probably does know that just because there's not a whole lot else <laughs> Ephro could have given that he didn't play a land, but he still has that's to go fair. for it. I, I think he, there's no you, way Randy would you just play passes. the Mox Opal first to play around Spell Pierce. I guess you can't really play around Spell Pierce, so there's nothing really to. Yeah, yeah I guess Randy can't even bluff anything here, can he? Because there's nothing in his deck that he could have used that for. Yeah, and I think this is going to play out. It doesn't really matter even which order people play the counters in, just because, I mean, the missteps are going to go first, and then the Spell Pierce, then the Forest, then the Pyroblast, or some other way like that. And both right. players are pretty much committed at this point. Like, Ephro cannot let this resolve, and Randy has to fight over it, so... Right. So and, if, he, if yeah. he pitches, and he pitches the Force, then he is still perfectly live to draw a Mana Source and cast that Twister in his hand next turn. Yeah, which is what I assume he'll do. This does give Ephro a pretty good shot. I mean, Ephro's going to be able to refill, even without the Library active immediately. Gush will turn the Library back on, and he's got both Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time, so yeah. I think Ephro's going to be in pretty good shape here. I, I agree. I think this this definitely favors Efro. Though the the Belcher deck's raw threat density means that uh, getting ahead is not the same as winning. No, and, and Efro does have to give you know give mind that he does want to get a young Pyromancer out sooner rather than later. So he's got five cards in his graveyard, so he can't quite just cast a one mana cruise or two mana dig. He could uh, he could play young Pyromancer and then gush. Yeah, I like I like opening with that. So if you play, it takes him right back into library, and then he can tap library, draw a card, and then play a land drop. Yeah, and have, if not mental misstep up. It looks like Efro is actually not on the library plan. He's just on the play oh. gush, then maybe play dig through time plan to look for force of will here. Okay. Yeah, that that seems that seems pretty reasonable. You don't really need the yeah. long term card advantage. Huh? He drew ancestral. That's fun too. Uh, looks like, <laughs> yeah, ancestral plus pyroblast. So pretty good right. shot of just of just playing a volcanic and playing ancestral, leaving pyroblast up. I like I like that. I like that. I mean, if it doesn't resolve, it's by no means the end of the world for Efro here. And if it does resolve, it's great. So either way, it's fine. And it looks like Efro is going to be able to have ancestral and if nothing else, have two counters in his hand. Yeah, I, I think that uh, that uh, Efro knows Randy can't counter anything because Randy would have kept fighting over, over the uh, his own ancestral. So, and now Efro found 
force. Th this is the kind of game that Delver wins. It's got a Pyromancer in play, and it's got enough counters to cover Randy's next two plays. And uh, mm -hmm. he, he's going to be able to threaten Randy. Randy's not going to have time probably to find a third threat. And he's even missing mana for his first two. He, he is. Those first few turns of not hitting anything from Randy, if this Mox had come a couple turns earlier, it would have been a very different game. Um, he can he can actually run out the Belcher, which would force Ephra to force here, which is... Well, he's one mana short of Belching. Uh, he can, he he can, can play it. Oh, no, he can't play it. You're right. Yeah. No, it's just he, he, Twister then, and that gets revved. He's going to play Twister, and yeah, for sure, Ephra is going to Pyroblast it. You don't use your Force of Will on a, a blue card, and you have a Pyroblast. Right. And so now Ephra is going to have five power in play, and then next turn he's going to have a dig through time up to find potentially a, a second Force of Will if he really needs it. Might as well take a look at what Randy's last card is, too. There's a Gitaxian probe, and it gets even better when it makes an elemental friend. Library. Uh, library's back, yeah. So that's uh, that's the second game in a row we've seen where Library has been powerful. And even here, where Library's not really the best in this matchup, it's let Euphro quash the initial wave from Randy and not let Randy, or to, to get ahead in cards while Randy is trying to refuel for the second round of threats. Yeah, it, Library was only made good because Randy stumbled for about two turns on turns two and three. But you know, it was good. It, it was much it better was. than almost any other uh, Ephra could have had in that in that spot. And now here's where Ephra no, has full information. He knows it's a Belcher, so he knows he doesn't have to worry about something like Mind's Desire. So pretty likely that he just lets Gr Grim Monolith resolve here. Yeah, especially when countering, it would take him off of what he's trying to do. And he has Dig Through Time and a pretty, pretty full graveyard to go with that Dig Through Time. Yeah, I, I could see Ephro casting Dig. He could just Dig in response. He's almost assuredly going to Dig this turn anyway. You might as well, like in response to the Belcher, that is. You might as well Dig to see what else you're going to be doing. Right, there could be like a, what, a Mist Moon Griffin that you really want to pitch to your four. <laughs> so, I mean, it's always good to have more options if you're going to do it anyway. I, I've seen that happen in Legacy. I have not yet seen that happen in Vintage. <laughs> it is a sweet combo, though. It is, it is. Alright, so here's the Treasure Cruise replacement. Honestly, Cruise being getting restricted has not dampened the enthusiasm of the Vintage Super League for Delver decks. <laughs> no, it's true. It, it made Delver worse because costing Certainly. one man is a lot more than costing two. But the Delver decks are already so good. Yeah. I was I was hoping, and LSV, I thought it might have been you who was going to break gifts wide open, but uh, I wasn't able to do it. I, I didn't have the time. Like, I didn't... Basically, it came down to playing a gifts deck that I had tested zero games with or playing something else, and I just didn't That's feel confident in, in the gifts deck I'd played zero That's games fair. with. I, in, in my testing of different gifts decks, I found that the Delver decks were still able to get underneath them because yeah. gifts is still trying to resolve a four mana spell, and uh, Delver is really good at beating decks that are slow and trying to do that. For sure. All right, so at this point, Randy's not technically dead because he's going to get hit down to four, but he's got one draw step, one even with the lightning bolt. He's got one draw step to potentially draw like a draw seven to get back into it, or just like a time vault. But oh, no. he, oh I guess he could draw a time vault, but oh, yeah. no, Ephro has a force of will, so Randy is dead. Yeah, there's no card, I, I think, that can save Randy at this point, barring him yeah. having a slice and dice in his deck somehow. <laughs> A slice and dice, and I guess a Simeon Spirit Guide. Well, he's got Mox Opal, so Mox Opal has. Oh, that's a... true. Okay, so he's halfway there. Even though Mox yeah, Opal's just a really bad Mox Sapphire in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of decks where other Moxes are just really bad Mox Sapphires, in all fairness. Yeah, so Ephro finds the lightning bolts as we see the one go to <laughs> his uh, his side even even before he delivers lethal. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was a great showing for library that Yeah. Um, library has been very successful today. Uh, it, it's been a good day for Alexandria. Absolutely. So 
Randy doesn't change his deck a whole lot, pretty much in any matchup, but in this matchup, least of all, like I, I would imagine that this is where like yeah. another mental misstep comes in in a defense grid, maybe a pact negation as well. I can't imagine that this is where he wants, certainly not like Leyline of Anticipation and probably not even Mishra's Workshop. I, no. I don't know, maybe, maybe no, it is, but it doesn't mean, seem like it. No, I think we're... I th I think those are both just for matchups against workshop decks. Um, yeah. Mishra's workshop. I mean, without Mishra's workshop, the deck actually can't win on turn one chalice for zero go. It it actually can't do anything. Um, and workshop lets you try to do something. So, but the problem with workshop and the reason they're not in the main, I'm assuming, is that you want Belcher to be a deterministic, if you will, kill. And by adding Mishra's workshops, um, you make it so it's not. Yeah. So, also, you have cards like Pact Negation that really don't do anything against Mishra's Workshop. Ephra, right. likewise, doesn't change his deck a lot. He doesn't get another Pyroblast uh, and a Fulster Storm. And then the the Ingatures have been good. Pulverize is pretty I, nice. I it's mainly for Pulverize. Workshops, but... But no, you're right. This is definitely a matchup where you can just set Randy down to no, no cards in play. Yeah. I mean, there's one, one permanent in Randy's deck that survives getting crushed by a giant elephant. And that card doesn't do anything once the elephant has arrived. Yeah. I um, I put been putting polarize in my Delver deck sideboard for a while and I've yet to actually cast it. It sounds so great to me. <laughs> I I actually have been trying to test them myself at different points on Magic Online. And yeah, it's never actually come up. Um, but I think it would be a really exciting thing to do. Yeah, I mean you're only siding in pulverize for matchups where it does well, what the name would suggest. So, yes. it, I imagine yes. if you ever get to cast it, you're pretty happy. It, it also has... It's got a great picture of an elephant just looks like he's stomping around in a marketplace, destroying everything. So, <laughs> yes. there's a lot in that card's favor. And right, here's... So. Here's the library that... Or the academy that we've talked about, but... Oh, man. Randy, so nothing to go with it. Randy kept this hand. You'll notice because Ephra's already on six cards. So R Randy's right. just going to say go on turn one. He's just going to hope to draw a zero drop. And if he draws a zero drop, he just explodes. Right. Yeah. And, of course, Ephra has no way of knowing that a random mox could be, you know, yeah. game over for him here. But on at the, the same hand, time, he could counter it. On the other hand, if Randy says go turn one, Ephra goes volcanic, go, because he's going to leave up uh, Pierce Pyroblast. Oh, wait, wait, wait. ephra has got another card sitting to the left. That's not his full oh, hand. Oh, no. Randy did mulligan. Yeah, Randy yeah. did. Okay. I, th I saw six cards. Thought for sure he had kept. First but... turn twister. So with this hand, it looks like Randy can... Um, he can diminishing returns on the first turn. And it looks like it's going to resolve uh, depending yeah. on... Because Ephra kept a hand. We're going to get the hand moved over so we can actually see it. We're going to... Uh, So, oh, okay. either way, ephra has got a Mox Ruby as his seventh card, but he kept a hand without Force of Will, though a very good hand. I would have kept this hand as well. It's a very good hand, yeah. I, think I, I can't you, fault yeah. Ephra for keeping this. If you run scared, if you mulligan hands like this, that is, Belcher gains in win percentage. I, I believe that is I, one of the ways Belcher does better. I, I, I think Ephra's keep is good because he has the mental misstep, so it's not like he doesn't have anything to do in the first turn. And he has an extremely solid hand should he get a turn. Yeah. He's going to get to mental misstep the key, but uh, diminishing returns is still going to happen here. Yeah. Which isn't a disaster for Ephra, honestly. Randy ends up with a Chrome Mox and a tapped Grim Monolith, which doesn't have a ton of value. He has some, but but not infinite. So Randy's really yeah, up just yeah. one permanent here. But the way this could go really badly for Ephra is if you somehow get stuck with an unplayable hand. And I don't yeah. think Randy has an unplayable hand if he has a blue well, box in play. If, if Randy ends up exiling his Talarian Academy, the game does get much harder for him to win. It's certainly yeah, winnable, that's but true. it gets harder. Oh, so he has a very reasonable hand over here, but without any threat. And uh, do, we, do we see what got exiled for Randy? Yeah, we'll take a look at what got exiled. It does not look like a Tularean Academy did, though. Uh, so just, no, a Tesseret, nothing. Yeah. Nothing ba extremely basically, it's important. just Academy. Like, all the other cards are fairly interchangeable. So, Randy, hit, hit a, his, his Gitaxian probe here wants to hit a threat because he's got mana and Force of Will. So, if he hits a threat, he can yeah. resolve it. 
if he if he hits a threat, he just he could he could win the game on the spot here, depending on what he drops. Yeah, he has right? enough I mean, he has enough mana to play and activate Belcher with Lionside Diamond. Yeah. And it looks like and, Ephro's thinking about forcing this. I mean, Randy is probably uh, not mark, marking down uh, Eric's hand here. Right. Right. Moto does not automatically record the hand content. So I actually keep a, uh, when I'm playing here, I actually keep a thing of paper here <laughs> to write down opponent's hands with. Well, normally when I'm playing Magic Online, I'm at a computer. So I actually just take a little screenshot of their hand. <laughs> <laughs> My computer can really handle running Notepad and Moto at the same time. Um, so, so looks like uh, Randy did hit Preordain, which is very good because that basically just lets him look at three more cards. It's close to Ancestral right. here. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he's got Force of Will. He's got he's got everything he needs. He found the Belcher. And so. there's the Belcher, and this game is over. Well, not 100%. Randy could actually still hit Tolarian Academy before he hits 18 That's true. other cards. That's true. Okay. You're Which right. Which do, does give Ifro outs, or I, I guess 17, because he's going to, Ifro is going to have to cast Force. You're right. It's non deterministic. Let's see what we get here. So now I bet Randy's wishing that he had exiled the Academy with Fishing Return. Yeah, that is the funny part. So now, Ifro's out is for Randy to miss on Belcher, and then Ifro actually doesn't have to kill it right away. Randy ends up with Mox Opal, Chrome Mox, and a tap Monolith in play, which is not enough to activate Belcher. So, right. Ra and you it's, know, it's with only thirty-seven cards left in his deck, actually, Randy is. I mean, Randy is favored, but he's not a huge favorite here. Um, like it's actually so very you close. Need to get into one additional mana source. So, I mean, on average, this should be lethal, but it's only... But not by, only not by very much favorite. at all, right? Like, not, by, not by much, no. I mean, with again, with 37 cards left in his deck, and Randy has to hit 17 before he hits before he hits the Flaren Academy, so... So... Of course, he then, then ends up getting to put Flaren Academy on top. So ooh, it looks like he... So he, he misses. He misses. He puts all these cards on the bottom... Which means he's not drawing Academy yet, which means he just has to hope to draw a mana source now. Right. So do you think that there would have been a reason for Randy to wait? I don't think so. The fact that he has to discard his hand to Lion's Eye Diamond is <laughs> certainly part of the calculus. I mean, I don't I don't really That's see what fair. waiting gets you. You also want to do it now, so if you untap and then draw a mana source, you get to activate it again. Okay, that makes sense. That's a good point. So now the question is, does Ifro cast one of his cantrips? to look for uh, a, a Force of Will or Ingot Chewer, or does he leave Pyroblast up or play a Delver? I think Delver is a pretty clear like, last. <laughs> I don't like leaving a counter up here, so I think it's... Well, and he leaving, force. leaving and Force of Will up is not force, too bad. Force of Will will stop any mana that Randy tries to play at this point, because yeah. the Academy is not the top of his library. Yeah. Oh, this is pretty brutal for Ephro. Had he left Pyroblast up, not not saying that's the right play, because I don't think it is. Yeah. Had he left Pyroblast up, he would have been able to Pyroblast Pure Dune, and he, I think he'd be pretty happy with that. I I, I think I would have preordained on Ephro's turn, just because I like preordaining a lot more, but I, I definitely would have run out of counter. I think Ephro's hope was to draw a way to cast, an Ingature and a way to cast it, but he's drawn pretty slim there, like to draw both of those in three cards. Agreed. The deck only has two cards that would permit actually casting the Ingot Chewer there. Yeah. Uh, Mox Ruby and Lotus. So I assume Randy's resolving Preordain now. I don't think you can force Preordain here. I mean, you could, but it doesn't seem good I, to I, do. I agree. You do um, probably so want to force looks the like, map, though? I think you have to force the map, yeah. So Ifro does so, pitching Dig Through Time because he's only got now four cards in his graveyard. He's going to cast Prudent so he can put this uh, young Pyromancer on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Ideally, he finds, I guess, ideally a Force of Will, but if failing that, a land, 
All right, Ingot Church. Oh, so. Ingot Church, very good here. Yeah. One turn. Oh, and then Randy oh, has the box. Wow. Which he, he might have peered in both. He may have peered, peered in both to the top. Uh, wow. All right. That that was a very good game. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was that was, that was pretty uh, nice sequence of plays there. I I'm curious how how likely it is that Ifro wins that game after after getting belched down to six because I mean Randy had to draw a man a mana source to get through a force then another mana source but his deck's just all mana so it is it right. is it's probably pretty close. Yeah, I think given that Ifro didn't have an elemental in his hand to chew on the belcher, I think that that hugely favors Randy. And that's, yeah. that's after the less than 50% of Randy missing on the first belching. Yeah, so things get a lot better, you know. I mean, this is the deck that most harshly punishes you for being on the draw. Had Ephra been on the play that game, he would have won that game, I think, fairly easily because he had Pyroblast and Spell Pierce. But that's, of course, part so. of the game. I mean, he was on the draw. So. Right. I mean, part of playing vintage is accepting that the coin flip is an important part of it. I mean, workshop decks are oh, yeah. decks that love being on the play. So, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's performance. You, you, really. you certainly signed up, signed up for that. So I, I have no problem with that. It is funny that there are some matchups like, you know, the Delver Mirror being on the play is not even always a good thing. Like, you should, I would choose to play, but it's not True. like a huge advantage. Well, <laughs> and we're getting, we're getting an apology for Moto having some. It Oh, that's fun. Well, at the very least, Randy yeah. has Academy in his opening hand again. So yeah. There, so there uh, Randy is has quite an opening hand there, and I, I thought I saw a Lotus in Ephro's hand. Ephro has Lotus, I guess Lotus Time Walk Delver, so. That's that's a very powerful start. Um, yeah, but Randy uh, has Lo Academy in his opening hand again, which is, you know, pretty tough to beat. It is. I didn't see what else went with the Academy, but... Uh, uh, magic online. It, yeah, it looked like it looked like Randy's only mana source was the Chrome Mox, but Mox plus Academy plus Ancestral is a good start. So it is. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. If Randy wins this, then the the Belcher deck will have been undefeated through two and a half weeks of vintage play here. Yeah, that's starting to look like a, a trend. I mean, I think seeing you know when when you're like two o three o, it's like that could have just happened, but yeah, being 5-0 is, is, you know, you're getting getting to the point where you have to start looking at what the results are. I'm currently providing, um, I think, half of the losses against Belcher, so I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of that. But uh, yeah. now the, the, deck's, the deck's very legitimate. It's an extremely good deck. Yes, I, I, I think that, I don't think anyone would argue against that. Also, I'm, I'm seeing here on the, uh, the Twitch feedback that I am frozen. I am in Pittsburgh, and it is kind of cold here, so... I suspect yeah, we're both uh, intermittently freezing here. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll find I'm, out. I'm not surprised. Soon. I'm not surprised. Uh, okay. Apparently we're having some magic online issues. Um, yeah, well... Hopefully we'll have that we sorted look out soon. Looking forward to, to my matchup tonight. I'm playing against Tom Martell, who's playing a kind of anti-combo dredge since he has Unmask in his main deck as well as Mental Misstep. I'm not looking forward to that. I think he's a favorite there. Well, um, I actually... I tested a bit of dredge against Storm, and uh, a lot of it depends on the exact configuration, but it's, it's a pretty interesting matchup. Both decks are built to be the turbo-aggressive deck. Certainly. Um, all right, looks like we're starting Magic Online here, and uh, I and I, I do think your your deck choice for this is very interesting. Um, it's a very cool deck. Yeah, I like I like yeah. I, it's do I like playing Doomsday. All right, so looks like some good hands on the parts of both players. I mean, it looks like so he throws top, see, um, two Delvers, Forest Time. Oh gosh. So, I, I think if you're Ephraim, you definitely keep that hand. And Randy's, oh, it looks like he didn't keep that hand. He did I not. I would have kept 
or Delver Prudin with forced backup? He didn't have Prudin. He had uh, Delver Delver Time Walk, Force, and then a uh, young Pyromancer and Lotus. He didn't have a cantrip in it. No, he didn't have a cantrip or a land, as far as I could tell. So I, I, I saw the no land. Um, yeah. Why is everyone in the chat saying Paul? Because, because Paul started saying it. <laughs> I don't know why. So, uh, Randy's hand is a monster. Randy's hand is very good here. I think Randy is going to end up going like turn one mocks, maybe imprint a mental misstep oh. or a pact negation, cast prudent, cast ancestral, cast mental misstep if he needs to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Randy's hand here is one of those devastating hands that sometimes happens with this deck. Yeah. And I think I think Ephra is going to go, you know, maybe turn one Lotus Delver land. That's yeah. I like that. Ephra, that leaves, it, it advances the threat and leaves the counter out. Yeah, Ephra's not in great shape though. His hand does not match up well against Randy's. I mean, he mulliganed and Randy just has a very like a hand that's both resilient and uh, and and fast, which is, you know, kind of what you, what the dream is. Yeah. Um. It looks like. It's continuing to go on about Paul. It looks like it has Storm or something. And, uh, I mean, Dave seems to like it, but most people want the chat to be more productive. So uh, we see here Randy didn't counter the Delver, which I think makes sense because Randy's looking to end uh, the game fast enough that I don't think the Delver is going to be a huge issue. I agree with that. Randy is also uh, anticipating pitching a land to Chrome or pitching a spell to Chrome Mox. So. You don't want to spew off your missteps too quickly, then. So I, I would probably pitch the Pact of Negation here. You can't pay for it quite yet, and it's not really safe to cast at this point. Uh, I actually might lean, might lean towards pitching Mental Misstep, just because you have two, and Ephra only has three cards in hand. I think you might want the misstep a, a few turns from now. Hmm. So, Randy agrees with you, though. He, he pitches the Pact. I assume... He, you lead I with, like playing the map here, and then yeah, yeah. I, I definitely like, no. I I agree with you. I, I like playing map, and then you can go academy plus. Though I guess Randy's right. hoping just to draw into a bunch of zero drops. Maybe this is actually better. This this does seem better. Well, I I would also if I'm playing on Efro's side, I'm going to throw whatever counter magic I have at the map. Yeah, that is another I would, reason. I would I would force the map there blind. So Randy actually has incentive to not cast Time Twister here. I think he would rather just try to preordain into into a threat instead, because Ephra's like only on three cards. Pre yeah, preordaining here seems pretty good. There's a lot that can go right with it. Yeah, even if you miss horribly, you can still then just Time Twister, even right. if you don't really want to, or you can just wait a turn or two. I mean, it's possible if if you wait and an Ephra doesn't do anything great in his next turn, then. You know, you're pretty happy either way. So. So it looks like yeah, Randy is crypt. contemplating, yeah, Mana Crypt. And you only keep the Mana Crypt if you're going to cast Time Twister, which, again, is still probably in heavy favor for Randy just because he has so much mana. But I still would not love to cast Time Twister against an opponent with three cards in hand who's not doing anything. I, I agree. Uh, what's the other card that he's seeing? Do we see that? I assume he already binned the other card. Right. Yeah. Okay. If I'm Randy, I think here... What's the, let's see. If you bin Mana Crypt and then draw a spell... I guess he kept Mana Crypt, so he's just going for the Time Twister now. Okay. Looks I like it. Ifra, I wonder if Ifra has the read here, because... If he throws Sax Lotus to Pyroblast, it ends up being much worse for him because he just gets misstepped. I wonder if he has the right. read and just lets the lets the Time Twister resolve. Also, it's not clear that it's bad for Ifro to have Time Twister resolve here. I mean, I guess it is because Randy's casting it. So That's you have really to assume interesting. It is, but though, I, I, I would still, I would still rub it here, but I think it would be better for Ifro if he didn't. But I still would, not knowing Randy's hand. Yeah. It's it, it's and an interesting this spot. Is really scary. Oh, oh, and, he, and then Ifro so it doesn't looks like Ifro has a mental misstep and a force, and Randy has 
no threats. Four sentiment misstep. Yeah, Randy's on zero threats. Though. He's on millions of Randy mana. He doesn't have a threat, right? I almost like Randy so not like even. I almost like if I'm Randy, not even playing any of these cards. I mean, he has Mind's Desire in his list, so I think keeping that as a really live draw seems good to me. That that makes sense. I mean, like he's already at you, twenty mana with the Candelabra. Like, <laughs> I mean, how, how much how much are you getting out of casting Grim Monolith or Soaring here? Because at this point, there's no way Ephro's countering a mana source. Like, Ephro just knows Randy ha Like, he's already conceded the mana battle. He doesn't have a strip mine in sight. Like, right. there's, there's no reason to counter any of the mana cards. So you, at, you might as well just let Randy go nuts and hope you can stop whatever threat he has. Right, right. You I might think mention, this is what, you might, yeah, you, I agree with you. I, I think I think that uh, Mental Missteps already, you know, getting kind of get, uh, bad here. But I guess... Ephro's just off it. He's he not worried. He didn't misstep it. So it looks like Randy bluffed and Ephro did not call him on it. But yeah. that does mean that Randy has an active force of will online. That is the advantage of playing Soaring, Grim Monolith, and Candelabra. But Randy's got nothing to protect here. And Ephro just drew another force of will. So this actually looks pretty good for Ephro here. He has oh, two yeah. forces and a step online. And. He doesn't have any land. He can ponder for the land since the blue man is not really doing much otherwise. He could also crack the lotus to play a young pyromancer. You know, I think it's very reasonable, especially since Flusterstorm is unlikely to, to fully counter anything. Let's say if you lotus, play pyromancer, cast ponder, you still have double force up. And then right. uh, you could also evoke ingot chewer on like Candelabra, even though you don't really need to do that anyway. It looks like he's... He's just pondering here, though. Yeah. I guess maybe he wants to save his Lotus to cast Dig at some point. I don't know. I would rather just get the Young Pyromancer into play. You have you have yeah, a lot of counters would, in your hand. I would also invest in the threat now to because you know, eventually Randy will draw something, and he behooves Efro to stop that from happening. So now that you have the mana, you could Ingot Chewer. Again, all the targets seem irrelevant except maybe Candelabra, which essentially doubles Randy's mana. But Randy's already on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 13 mana even if the Candelabra got removed, which yeah, I mean, is effectively Randy's infinite. Randy's still hardcast his Emrakul next turn even without the Candelabra, so I don't think the mana denial plan is all that effective here. Yeah. The... The unfortunate part is that there's no way that Randy like resolves an important artifact and then uh, and then passes the turn. Like I guess I mean Randy's not going to just play Time Vault and pass the turn. He, if a Belcher resolves, Ephro's dead. So I think that uh, I think that Ephro might. It's a pretty good consideration to to, to using it. True. I guess there's just no reason to. Though it just doesn't help. <laughs> he's got he's got Randy's just has too much mana. Yeah. I, I it's possible that Ingotru's best role here is to. Get hard help you if you draw a library <laughs> rather than being cast. Oh yeah, that's an even better point. <laughs> so basically, what Efro needs now, since his force trades with Randy's and his other force trades with Randy's first threat, is Efro to not or Fran Randy not to draw a threat. For, basically, he needs Randy not to draw two threats in about four to four turns or so. I imagine that's how long Efro right. needs to hold. Maybe three. If right. Efro draws time walk, he can cut a clock a turn off the clock. Agree. Um, I think I, this is a really interesting game, and a lot of this will come down to exactly what Randy does and what Randy has. But I think, well, I think well, more Ephra more what Randy draws. Because so <laughs> I think uh, Efro yeah. gets so much by casting the uh, the Pyromancer here. Yeah, I think it gives it buys him at like a full turn. I don't know. I would have been in favor of just casting Pyromancer, but I would have led with it and then pondered. Yeah, agreed. Let's see, so given that Randy has enough mana to deploy anything he draws, yeah, it really just comes down to. It looks like Ephro is going to go with the Pyromancer. So I still like this. Even though I would have done it first, I still do like getting a Pyromancer. Yeah, I, I agree. I, it's, it's very important to set up a threat here. And Ephro cutting it's off true. the potential of double threat turns. I know for sure one card he's not going to target, <laughs> and that's Mana Crypt. Probably not the one that's working on his team here, also attacking Randy's life total. Yeah. 
All right, so Randy actually really needs to draw like two threats in about three draw steps, given what's going on now, which the deck is yeah, certainly capable of doing. Help. Also worth noting that if Randy draws the particular threat that is Mind's Desire, he's got enough mana that he can pay for Fluster Storms and uh, end That's up in really good space. Oh, wow, that was a good draw. Gush was among Ephra's buzz. That was. So Randy almost has just a turn if he loses this mana crypt flip. In That's fact, he true. It, it looks like Ephra got more out of this draw seven than Randy did. He he really did. I don't think Ephra could win the game, you know, if Randy hit any any other threat besides a draw seven, but it turned out that was the particular threat he hit. Right. Which is kind of surprising. It's kind of surprising that Randy didn't hit any threats off that draw seven, given how threat dense his deck is. Yeah. So Ifro can now tap out for Dig Through Time. But mm. I don't know if I like that. I guess you 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 really can't fluster storm anything. <laughs> I always want to keep fluster storm up, but it's just so hard to fluster imagine fluster storming here. The only relevant so card what do you want to, Yeah, the what only do you relevant hit here if force you're of off this more forces just Yeah, I think that's the only relevant card besides Actually, this is great. I would definitely let this force of will resolve. Oh, yeah, this this works out really, really yeah. well for Ifra. Ifra just hit a Force of Will off his dick through time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a bonus Library of Lang to keep it in his hand. This just works out in all sorts of yeah. ways. I'm sure Ifra was thrilled to see that. So now Randy needs to win the coin flip and get two draw steps or lose it and draw Mind's Desire and hit the right the right sequence of spells. Well, he didn't, he didn't lose the... The coin flip, so he, he Randy gets another draw step here. He uh, he can still lose the flip on his next turn, right? That seven coming in. He's at That's nine, true. That's so true. He's, still... He actually had to had to hit multiple coin flips here. So Randy so now he... has to win a coin flip and hit Mind's Desire exactly. Randy's at like a little over one percent, right? He needs to draw that one card in his deck that'll get him out of this and survive the coin flip. And Mind's Desire is an automatic win. It hits six cards. Or five cards, rather. Or six, yeah, six total cards. But Ifru does have a bunch of counters. It's not 0% that uh, Ifru No, you're has. right. Given Randy's luck so far in this with seeing seven cards, I he might actually might desire into nothing. Yeah. And at this point, if you're Ifro, I don't think you do anything else. You just pass. And... All right. Well, he, he won the coin flip. Uh, and he hit diminishing returns, but yeah, but you know it's kind of diminishing at this point. Um, it's not resolving, so no. I mean, Randy has to cast all his artifact mana first, but and Efro's going to let it happen. Yeah. I don't think Efro's all that concerned with Randy having additional amounts of mana because Randy's not playing Carvex Torch. I guess even if he were, Efro could still counter it and pay the two. So there's no way this works out for Randy. Yeah. To, do you think Randy should have included another utility a utility land to expedition map for for situations like this? I I don't think so because I, I think that once you start to do that, it just diminishes your ability to win on culture. We <laughs> yeah. saw before how sometimes you build and don't get there, and every extra land you add increases the odds of that happening. Yeah, I I, I also agree with that, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he wants to put a fairy conclave in there and try to win by beats or something. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a little bit of the Jeskai Ascendancy combo. Yeah. Yeah. And there, Ephro has finally broken the streak of Spell Track. And yeah. Randy was drawing. Was, it was funny. Uh, Randy had a turn one win, but then didn't win because he didn't because he, he hit the Academy. And then Ephro right. still lost because Randy drew mana. And then th that game, when it did look like Ephro couldn't possibly win because Randy's hand was insane, Ephro... Or uh, Randy time twisted Ephro into a great hand, and Randy drew a yeah. force of will and six mana sources, or a misstep of force and five mana yeah. sources. So <laughs> that's, that's it's a low probability thing, but that's how time twister works. Sometimes, sometimes your opponent just ends up with a much better hand than you. That is that is one of the drawbacks. Yes, <laughs> but uh, all right. So it yeah. looks like. Up next, we have uh, Steve Menendian against David Williams. So we've got a nice little dredge match back in action. We're going to actually see dredge in the next two matches here. But uh, I like my side of things a little more than I like the, the Delver side of things against dredge. But I guess we'll find out. And uh, 
I think we'll be I taking mean, a break I, pretty soon here. I agree. I think I think the matchup will favor you, but it's not a foregone conclusion by any means. Oh no. Most certainly not. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to have uh, Randy and Efro actually doing commentary on uh, – oh, actually, no, I guess Randy can't tonight. So we're going to have Efro and uh, I think it might even be you. We'll, we'll, we'll find out momentarily doing commentary. Me? All right. Oh. Um, on us. Okay. Yeah. Well, it looks like actually it's Tom Martell doing commentary with Efro on the Stephen Nenny and David Williams match. So we'll be back in a moment with that. Okay. 